Hi friends, host Eric here, host of Talking with Fantasy Boy. I'm here with Rachel and we've been having a interesting conversation and she's been telling me a little bit about some stuff that was troubling her, stuff from her past. And I mentioned last night that I thought maybe we should make a video about it this morning and we were talking about it right now and so decided to make it. Um, let's start with a little bit of background information. One of the issues that's prompted this response is you made a friend in New York, uh, last time you went back there and we were hanging out with her, Janice, and a couple other people from your uh, group, your camp. And I guess, so let's start with, Janice started asking questions about, I guess, why you were leaving, right? Well, she had, no, well, actually it started out with, um, she asked how I met you. And I explained online. Um, through YouTube, but she didn't know what YouTube was, so I had to go into what that was, um, and then I explained to her that I flew out from New York to be with you for a week, and that I ended up staying longer. Mm -hmm. So, in general, it seems as though she came into those conversations with the notion that you were making a mistake in coming back out here again. Um, once you finished your camps and uh, you were planning on coming out here for two weeks once again, you came out here and now you're going to be here because uh, of housing situations and just because we were meant to be together. But Yeah. Um, <laughs> so she was, she went into it with concern that this is probably not a good idea for you, right? Yeah, it was, it was concern, half concern, half upsetting because she's like, well, now I don't have a friend, like, and I get that. Um, yeah. But, uh, um, it was, uh, she was also the first person who I spoke with about, you know, flying out to you in, in early March who mentioned the coronavirus. And I was like, no, why did someone, like, put it in my mind about... <laughs> the airplane and coronavirus and so you know it was just um a difficult um a difficult conversation because uh like to her making a trip cross country to someone who's pretty much a, a stranger made absolute no sense so i had to kind of like almost like describe my my reasons why, but uh, it didn't really matter. Well, so ba basically, let me sort of frame this a bit here. It, it seems to me as though you're dealing with somebody who's wanting you to justify NI realities that are difficult to break down exactly why they're justifiable, and that to break yeah. it down, you're going to have to give them a whole lot of information, which you're aware how that information is going to impact them. Right? Yeah. You also indicated that this woman maybe would would prefer to, you know, would like to be in a happy relationship herself, right? Yeah, and like, you know, it was almost like knowing you. you. I don't think this actually was real, but I did have a hesitancy of showing her you and introducing you because she's very close to your age mm. so like she'd be extra kind of Haiti I guess it could it could, could be right could be, yeah. yeah some people do you know it's like uh, it's like when african-american women get upset with uh, women white women who go out with black men because it's like you know you're it's the limit limit limitations or something I don't know. I don't really really subscribe to that, but it's along the lines of that. So I didn't really feel comfortable showing her. Well, you know, white white men sometimes get mad at me for going out with you, depending on what race I am in a given moment. Exactly. So it it is a real thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. Well, this seems to be indicative of more than just this particular instance. Yeah. It seems like <laughs> you know the world when it oppresses you and probably when it oppresses the INFJ in general it does so by invalidating the holistic nature of NI and insisting that you parse it out and break it down and give all these explanations yeah. and justifications for shit when the reality is it's the reason is the whole thing 
So if you're trying to explain to somebody why it's a good idea for you to leave New York to be here with me, there's a lot of different vectors to cover. I yeah. mean, there's our compatibility, there's the fact that I want you here and you want to be here, there's the fact that you're not wanted in New York in that residence. That's fast. Um, the fact that uh, heretofore, prior to being with me, it seems as though you dealt with a lot of people who basically didn't understand you, didn't understand the legitimacy of what you were saying, and tried to invalidate you all the time. Yes. And the only reason you're still you're, you're still okay is because you're an NI dom and not an SI dom. <laughs> Truth. That's, yeah. So earlier you were actually crying. Um, yeah. You were crying about Janice in particular? I think, so I, it's interesting because um, I, talking to Janice brought up a lot of memories that I had with past ESFJ friends whom I was very close with, but that, you know, when you really broke down the friendship, it, it, uh, it played a lot like uh, sisters with the ESFJ as the older sister. So I was like constantly like in her, sh like falling behind her. And They're constantly her. underestimating you, basically. Yeah. ESFJs will do that with anybody, but that has to do with NI polar as well. For an ESFJ, they see an INFJ and they go, I get the FE, mm -hmm. but why don't you know things like I do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm intuiting actually. Oh, that's not real. <laughs> Those aren't real things. Those are, those are truths don't matter. Yeah, they words don't matter. They identify more with they they a lot of I I, I don't want to a lot of them say that they are very intuitive, but what they're not recognizing is that it's more of a female intuition than motherly intuition. Well, they've got F E intuition. I thought that's why I thought my ex yes J wife was an intuitive because. When she talked about F.E. stuff, and we talked about people and their motivations and stuff, she sounded pretty intuitive. Mm -hmm. um, she was usually had good instincts about people's um, moods or attitudes or perceptions. Mm -hmm. But the problem was she didn't understand how things stuck. Like, um, oh, that's fundamentally changed by these meanings going forward. You know, it's like, they just forget that it's it's odd. Nipolar is a very odd function. Yeah. We see it in my dad, too. Like, you know, he, he doesn't get the way that one can generalize from things. So, he's encouraged me on multiple occasions to eat what I feel like eating and to go and get food as I see fit and whatever. But the other day, I went and I took... I said, I'm going to take some of these Cheerios to feed to the peacock. And I got in trouble for it. And he came <laughs> out and was like, ownership, Eric, you need to ask if I... I'm like, okay. It's like, what can I can't do? This? Well, I mean, correct, true. Now that I think about it, you know, he has encouraged me to eat food myself. <laughs> Rachel eat food. He's encouraged me to feed Pete food from the Pete food area, which is over by the corner, which he's made for like peanuts and stuff. But he's never actually encouraged me to use his Cheerios to feed Pete. So, <laughs> that's NI Polar. It's like there's no generalization at all. Mm. It's just... Uh, it's so... It, it's... Yeah, no, no. Would you like to pull this? Sure. Did you sleep okay last night? Were you troubled? <coughs> I came out here pretty much. I lay down for, I don't know, 45 minutes, maybe half an hour. And then I, I was like, okay, who am I trying to fool here? I'm not going to go to sleep. You but, know what? Um, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I interrupted you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, like. I think once my body got used to the fact that you weren't coming back, I was able to sleep. Right. I, I, I anticipate you'd sleep better. We'd sleep better separately, ultimately. Yeah, unless there's a big bed. 
It is a big bed, even so. No, but I mean, yeah, no, I, I, that's what I mean, like. All right. I mean, it really just depends on the individual sleep, is what I think. It's like, if it's during the day, if it's nap time after sex or something, we sleep yeah. beautifully. Yeah. If it's nighttime, like midnight, neither of us is going to sleep. No matter how many sleeping pills you take or I take. I mean. It's weird. Yeah. Regardless, it's a little off topic. So, INFJs, I suspect across the world in general, have the same kind of experience where they feel as though they understand things more clearly than those around them. And those around them are passing judgment on them for understanding less clearly because they themselves understand so less clearly than the INFJ that they have this sort of Dunning-Kruger effect where they presume that the NI is meaningless because it's not... Because it, also because of the T.E. Polar, you know? Like, T.E. Yeah, Polar... Yeah, like... I, yeah, and like... I mean... It makes it easy to bust INFJ chops if you're looking to do so. Yeah. Because they're always going to be doing something dumb. <laughs> like, um... <laughs> like, last night, Rachel couldn't figure out how to kick my shoulder. Yeah, I couldn't. And it's a pretty simple task. I, I was Literally. lying on the floor trying to get her to kick with the heel of her foot right here. And she couldn't figure out how I to do it. I couldn't get the spot. I was like, where am where? I couldn't get it. So the thing is, I actually got frustrated and was short with Rachel last night for um, like 15 seconds, maybe. <laughs> um, but I apologize afterwards. I shouldn't get frustrated over stuff like that because, of course, I don't really care. It's just I don't like it when I feel like I'm not able to communicate successfully. Oh, I hear you. I mean, like... Yeah, there's no words that were going to help that. Um, what was I going to say regarding this, though? See, I'm fucking foggy mind. I have not been... I've had stuff on my mind okay. that I don't like. Well, let me, let me direct it a little bit and see if you can pick up where I hand you the ball here, okay? Yeah. Um, so, one aspect of being an INFJ who's not in an entirely loving and supportive and understanding family is that they're going to be leveraged with TE approaches. That is to say, people are going to try to give yeah. Rachel like What's in, the things in, to do? incentives or threats yep. to motivate her behavior. No that is works. fundamentally appalling to her. And understandably so. It's fundamentally appalling to me too. I don't like being incentivized or disincentivized. Don't leverage me. Get my actual agreement and consent. Yeah, cause, uh, yeah, I. And Rachel, so. that not was not treated like that. She was not treated as somebody who, foremost, needed to provide genuine agreement and consent. She was treated as somebody who was, who needed to be leveraged for her own good. Um. Yeah, and I felt like I was living in like. The wrong world, constantly. I think up until th the I turned 30, I was like, what is this world? Why don't I fit in? Like, it's just so fast-paced and so, like, busybody and, like... Sensor. So full yeah. of sensors. Yeah. When I read that, when I read about sensors and learned about how they dominate most of society, it made a lot more sense to me. That pie chart. You know the one. You can Google it. Yeah, well, there are really only two intuitives, who, or three intuitives, who can... <coughs> <coughs> who can mesh with sensors effectively. ENTJs and ENFJs, because... Mm. They are very mm -hmm. sensor-like. Mm -hmm. They have SE third slot, so it makes them very sensor-like. Mm -hmm. ENTP is the third, third kind, of, third kind of intuitive that can hang with sensors because sensors are intimidated of ENTPs if they're fighty. Because even though we're intuitives, most battles in life occur with words. Yeah. Yes, they do. So. Sensors don't try to push me around, but they try to push Rachel around. Uh. And you get the sense, I mean, I get the sense that for those people, they're in some sort of primitive stage of development where they 
still view that which is foreign, especially if it's in some ways more talented than they are, as as the thing to kill. Mm-hmm. You know, we must kill this difference in Rachel. Yeah, she's like, not the same as us. Yeah, I remember. Um, so, I this place that I worked at a real estate office. <coughs> Um, I took off because I was sick, and the next time I came in, my boss reamed me out for taking off because I was sick. It was like this, it was the second time, yes, but it was totally legit, and like, so far apart, too. I was like, you are such a miserable person, and you just need to have your way, and you're jealous because I'm actually using the rules in my own way. So that's what they had against me. And uh, I never understood it. I mean, what they had against you was the fact that you were an intuitive. It wasn't a TE user who didn't who didn't fundamentally operate with this great respect and sort of terror of protocol. Yeah, no. You know, it's like my dad with the... With the legal thing with Becky, ESTJ, and I polar. It didn't matter how much I told him the obvious facts of the matter, which is Becky cannot possibly sue him for anything. Um, and he went and saw the lawyer anyway, who told him the same thing. Mm-hmm. Why? Because, well, that's what one does when one's threatened with a lawsuit, protocols, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you grew up in a house with an ESTJ mother. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've interacted with her a fair number of times. She she can be extremely helpful, but she's also, she doesn't have respect for your being. Mm-hmm. In the sense that she doesn't understand that you know better than anybody else what's good for you. You may not yes. always do it, right? You may not always do it, no. but you know best what's good for you. Mm-hmm. As everybody does, ultimately. You know, it's like you can't... People might think, oh, smoking weed's bad for you. Well, it may be bad for you. I don't know. You decide that. Right. I'll decide if it's bad for me. Yeah, and that was always my argument, too. It's like, how do you know what's best for me? It's like, I, I don't know. But... You know, uh, I mean, it does, it just, it just, it did feel weird. I, I did feel like, uh, I was living, I just, I just, I just always felt out of place, even when I tried to fit in. I remember there was one Halloween where everyone was dressing up slutty and I couldn't get, I couldn't sew the, we were going to be, uh, crayons. It was actually kind of cute, but I couldn't get the thing together. So... Um, I was like, I'm just going to use my costume from last year. It's easy. It was Alice in Wonderland. And then, like, I'm at the bar with everyone. They're all, like, partying hard in their costumes and stuff. And, like, getting all, like, animalistic. And I'm like, I was like, I felt like I was tripping. Bunch of censors. <laughs> you know, no offense, censors. I'm not, I don't have anything against censors. <laughs> no, neither do I. That's but, a great time. But, you know... Rachel, like, neither you nor I want to meaninglessly pod people. What does that mean? Like, let's go to the bar, get drunk, everybody dress oh, yeah. sweaty, and we'll meaninglessly pod various people. Oh my god, they're, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Girls yeah. and guys alike pawing at each yeah. other randomly. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. And think that that's a good use of our time. Yeah. Because no. <laughs> that just sounds like, number one, I mean, obviously we're in a relationship. Let's say I was single. Number <laughs> yeah, one, yes. it sounds like, um, like the sort of thing that I find awkward and icky, especially sober, because I don't drink, <laughs> you know? Um, it is, though. You're, you're correct, actually. But number two, it's... It's precisely the opposite of meaningful. And, and what we like is meanings. We like 
we like to be able to talk about things, why these things are good or bad, or what this means, or what that means, why this person does this, or why this piece mm-hmm. of art is accomplished mm-hmm. or fails, stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't mean we're not, we don't have our physical time. We do. We obviously have sexual intercourse. Yeah. We are in a relationship with one another, after all. I'm male. She's female. <laughs> yes. I use my penis. I put it in her vagina. <laughs> um, but, you know, once sexy, sexual time is done and then we're out of the bedroom, we're not like... We're in, not in that frame of physicality anymore until we are again, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, And why would you want to be? I don't understand. But obviously I'm not a censor, so I don't understand. Um, I guess if you don't have any words and meanings to play with, then you just grunt and rut. Yeah. Grunt and rut and yeah. drink. Mm-hmm. Stomp your feet. Yeah. And wee! Yeah, wee! Spring break! Yeah! Show me your tits! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I don't have, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. But it did make me feel <laughs> like I was like this ugly duckling in this like very neon world. Right. You've got all these people having very simple understandings of simple experiences and feeling fulfilled by experiences that don't fulfill you at all. Yeah. And seeming to have some sort of clarity about their path or at least their purpose or something, which is really just an absence of self-reflection that you and I both have had to fight for. Yeah, you're correct. I, I remember when I first found out about MBTI, cognitive functions, before I found out about cognitive functions, just found out MBTI and type descriptions was all I found out about first. It was years later I found out about cognitive functions. Anyway, when I first found out hmm. MBTI, MBTI types and I read my type description I burst into tears because I finally understood what was wrong with me well that's how I feel now too actually I feel my type you know everything is making sense like ever since you type me as INFJ which it totally is because like and it note, just tells the story of my life and note prior when I when I was saying you were an ENFJ you kept saying I, but this doesn't, I don't know, I hate ENFJs. <laughs> you know? Hang on, I didn't mean to be like... No, I know, I, I kept saying to you for quite some time, well, you know, I don't know what to tell you, Rachel, you're an ENFJ, you just don't, you don't feel trapped by your type or whatever. But the thing is, soon enough, pretty quick, I started seeing too much SI shit. Yeah, too I much remember SI it. For, for you being an ENFJ. Too I much it, capacity to remember day. shit, and too much capacity to... Uh, use past examples too much awareness of your bodily state which isn't very good but your your awareness isn't very good but it's be- way better than the ENFJ <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's still it's still being that it's still not so eventually I was like uh Rachel you might want your hundred bucks back but <laughs> <laughs> I think I thought you were wrong I think you're an INFJ <laughs> uh, but you know what um I did cut that that session short like, I know that it could, it could have gone far, farther in, in some way. In my mind, I feel like we would have gotten maybe past. I yeah, well, you were being like super it. nice. You were being super nice, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, you, were, you were being great. And Thanks. It wasn't that one long after that, not too long after that, that I, uh, that you terror read me. Yeah. Remember? And that was the that was the start of our relationship. Yeah. And at that point, because I wanted her to terror read me, I wanted her to terror read me. I just wanted to talk to her because I wanted to see if I wanted to get her <laughs> pants. <laughs> yeah, but you did there. leave it open for someone else too. You kind of like put it in the chat, so it could have been. Uh, I just figured I uh, I would avoid any possibility of rejection. That but way. how did you know about tarot? <laughs> you had mentioned it in at some point before, either. In the typing or in a comment or something. Ah. I knew. Or in a live stream, I think. Um, we were talking about tarot. I said, I want to get my tarot read. Yeah. Because there was this lady there named um, t- Tarot Siren? Or? Yeah, yeah. Tarot Siren. Yeah, Siren Tarot. Siren Tarot, I yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, 
Um, I had you read my my tarot. <laughs> that was a, like one of the maybe within the first five times in my life I'd had my tarot read. I'd had it read about a year prior at a, at a county fair with Kimberly. I'd had it read with Ken in Ohio. And I probably had it read a couple times, sometime a long time prior than that, but I don't even remember. But I know I had read at least twice before you read them. Um, and then since now, I'm like getting to be quite the expert on them. Yeah, <laughs> he's a natural. Natural. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, you're welcome. That. You picked the right away. Very impressed. So, you were feeling bad earlier. You said it was a lot of different factors. So, can you yeah. articulate any other things that you uh, I've sort of glossed over or well, pushed around here with my insistence on talking? It was mostly that. It was mostly, like, just, like, it was crazy. I got triggered. I, I fully got triggered by the conversation that I had with Janice. Oh, I know what triggered me, too. I'm such a fucking dumbass. I got hoity-toity. And I'm like, I did astrology comparisons for you and a friend. And like, one of the reports was really good. And I was like, God damn it! <laughs> like, why did I do this? Who did you do it for? You and me and who? Um, my friend Alana. Oh. <laughs> I bet we don't have the same good... We don't, I bet our bio aren't as good. No, they aren't. I checked that. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not at all. I, I, it's like 65%. Look, I don't know about astrology in general as far as how much it tells you about compatibility. Because the thing is, you got so many different shit, right? You got your moon in this, mm -hmm. you got your, your house in that, you got your cat in the bag, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. You got a lot of different things. And a lot of them are competing... Competing influences. Yes. So they, maybe they wash each other out. Maybe sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. So in that sense, I don't think it's a very good uh, way to determine compatibility between people. I agree with you, actually. Um, it's totally, it's totally my own thing, you know. Like I was playing with fire. Um, I, I get because I care about it. Okay, I get crazy. You're my precious I treasure of glory and majesty. <laughs> You're my regal, majestic wonder. Oh, you smell so yummy. It doesn't matter how perfect the astrology. You know what? I know Rachel, it doesn't. I, I don't just love you in spite of your gods. I love you because of them. Thanks, baby. You know, for those of you out there who know astrology, Rachel is nothing but yods and rectangles. It's true. Okay, apparently that's bad. Whereas I'm nothing but yeah. stars and shiny things or something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. But she's my precious wonder. <laughs> so obviously the stars are wrong about you because we have each other. I know, and that's what I come down to, to the conclusion of. Actually, so like, you know how I say I, I think I was like cursed by a witch for like 10 years and I had to go through like stuff? Well, at that same time is when I like, actually really started um, studying astrology and mm. so I kind of associate that time with me experimenting with it and then ultimately coming to the conclusion that it's like good to know like I think that there is some psychological stuff that's in there but that you just can't live your life on it. You tarot can't. is more useful. Tarot is more useful. Tarot is more intuitive. Tarot is more fun. Yeah. There doesn't have a lot of complicated looking symbols <laughs> that I don't understand. You know? It's a totally different language. I was like, what is this yeah. thing here? Yeah. Uh, okay, it's never mind. I don't even want to learn this shit. Just, it looks hard. It is hard. It is. And then they keep on adding stuff to it. It just keeps on changing. But look, it, it's fun. It's really entertaining. Again, I think it's, it, I think it's good to know, you know, your birth chart a little bit, find out who doesn't like learning about themselves, even well, if it isn't true. <laughs> you know what I liked learning about today? What? I liked learning from that old advertisement that cancer is sometimes known as Moonchild. Yes. Why is that? I think because they really didn't want the word cancer, cancer to be yeah, so mm. Moonchild's more hip. Mm. On another note, I spoke to another INFJ today besides Rachel. Yeah. Well, Rachel and I spoke with Lightbulb, who uh, 
is an old member of the community from about at least five years ago, I'd say. Or about five years ago, probably. She first came around and um, used to hang out in the raw room fair amount. And this is the first time today that I've ever spoken to her one-on-one, -on -one, I think, as far as I can recall. Unless, unless maybe we were both in the room after, like, there was a group and a couple people left and maybe left us there alone. I, not that I recall, anyway. I was speaking to her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but, interesting conversation. You know, she had uh, the old brain surgery. Wow. And not in, the, like, the funny ha-ha, like, Real brain surgery. Yeah, like she had a brain tumor and wow. they cut it out. And it's, you know, she discussed some of the some of the more challenging aspects of, of dealing with that having little to do with the... Like she's... I, I was... But I, I knew she had told me before and said, I said publicly, so I feel comfortable commenting about it, that uh, she'd had brain surgery and had had a brain tumor. But I didn't know because I hadn't spoken to her at all um, since that happened, I just gotten, I just spoken to her via, um, text, via chats and stuff, you know, mm. and so I didn't know what to expect, I wasn't sure if she was going to be kind of like, <laughs> you know, yeah. but she wasn't at all, she was normal, she's, uh, but she does have some issues with her hearing, and, um, and so that was, and, and her balance a little bit, still, uh, they have to, you have to go in somewhere, you know. Anyway, it really makes you realize uh, your problems aren't that big. <laughs> or whatever they may be. Uh, I, I increasingly realize just how fortunate and silver spoony my life is. I have very good parents who love me and are fair and kind and, and you know, want me to be happy. Uh, not everybody does. And my experience with medical professionals heretofore in my life have all been mostly good. I, I had a bad therapist or two, but um, who hasn't? Yeah. Um, it's a part of it. Is it a hair? Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll get that after this video. Uh, Rachel's experience with medical professionals in New York was not good at all. They were, in fact, colluding with the least noble instincts of her family members mm -hmm. and uh, working with them to to treat her for a problem she didn't have including a lot of behavioral behaviorist shit like if you smoke pot in the house you're going to get punished with ridiculous punishments that are just degrading and and uh the smug self-satisfaction of her mother when Rachel was living outside from nine to nine, and I, I, oh yeah, you were there. I was there on the phone yeah. with her. We were chatting a lot during that time period, wow. and I remember one day Rachel's mom came by and I listened to her, her sort of smug satisfaction in control of everything thing that she was doing. Well, Rachel. <laughs> You know, I'm the boss. You you have you have no power. Well, I mean, boy, did the tables turn quickly. Because um, as soon as she came here, I you know she was gonna go back to New York. I was gonna okay, well, we'll go back to New York, and then you come back here. But I need to at least talk to your family a bit before you go back to New York because I want to make sure that you're not that you're treated decently. You know. I don't want, there's not going to be any more of this, you live outside shit. Um, well, mom wouldn't talk to me about it at all. Uh, we went directly into screaming. So both of us did, basically. It was like two eights, uh, narcissistic person and Eric going, bah! <laughs> <laughs> um, I did deal with her and was able to deal with her when... I wasn't about critiquing her, and I was only about working with her to help Rachel. And in fact, by the end of that, I was like, wow, she was really quite helpful and quite quite a good person to deal with. Doesn't change the fact. <laughs> it does not change the fact that um, 
she's done unacceptable things. She's had the wrong frame. She's prioritized the wrong thing. She's not treated Rachel like a human being a lot of times, but rather like, um, well, like Conrad and then Sridney bashed her. So, uh, anyway, anything else you want to talk about in this video before we end it? I don't think the words been upsetting me. I mean, the whole coronavirus thing. I mean, I think we settled in, like, nicely uh, during this, like, hunker down. But uh, it's still, like, it's so laughable and upsetting. It just is, it's, I, it's still, it's still there for me. It was um, extremely upsetting to me at first. Um, I guess because I'm SI, not NI. I've gotten accustomed to this comfortable I am pleasantness with Rachel. I'm actually I fucking too. loving life right, right now, me frankly. Me too. I am too. It's, it's great. great. There's nothing bad going on here. No. And when we've been exploring, it's been really fun too. I feel like I I feel like seeing the like city in such a different way is so special. We went to Venice right before they closed the beaches. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, we could still go various places, I'm sure. Oh, I'm not worried. But, uh, yeah, yeah, so, like, you know, having that conversation with Janice definitely triggered some old memories and old wounds that I had of old friends that I got really close with but just never really connected to. And it made me sad. So what do you think the lack of connection was? They just didn't understand you? Yeah, like, I... It did feel imbalanced, like... I don't know, maybe not in balance, but maybe she was more beneficial to me in the beginning of our friendship, and then as it went along, I became more beneficial to her, but, like, it didn't really develop that healthily, because she kind of wanted the old roles to still stay in play, mm -hmm. but I was growing, like, I'm not gonna hang around just because it's, like, more comfortable to, for you to have me at your parties, um, the other thing is, of course, as somebody who's had mental health hospitalizations, oh. um, and you've had some, some behavior that's led to that, so yeah. to speak, uh, you've alienated some people, I'm sure, mm -hmm. but the thing to note is, of course, only an idiot would be alienated by your behavior in those contexts, because, after all, you're not yourself in those moments. No. And if they value you at all, those moments wouldn't impact their valuing of you. Yeah. Because they're deviations from the norm. They're not who you are. They are the alternative to who you are. Yeah. It was really, really painful to come home and then, see, like, the people who you thought were, like, like, your ride or dies, like, were afraid to even come around oh, you. Oh, Rachel, I'm busy right now. Or some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck oh, yeah. that noise. No. You know, it's like, I, we, I went through a lot of good experiences when you had your episode. I learned how valuable you were to me. Um, I learned, I, I got to experience the FI of of thinking you were walking around the streets, you know. And feeling how how important it was to me that you were okay. And I got to experience what I would call the ideal problem. It's like, even at your worst, um, you're not evil. Mm, thanks, baby. No... You say some nasty things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not, you're not evil at all, and you don't attack me at all. No, it's true. You I never know, attacked me once. I love you truly. I, love I can't. You too. I can't. <laughs> it's like, it's like impossible. Like, you know what I picture it is? Like superheroes, right? Say we're to get into like a, a spat, as like a marital spat, like, like you're walking backwards, and I'm like, like throwing like stuff at you but none of it hits you like all around you but like never hits you <laughs> <laughs> I mean the thing is 
when, at first, when it first was starting, I uh, I didn't know what it was, and I started getting angry, and we started, I started yelling at you, and you said, you're not Eric, Eric is kind and, and loving, <laughs> or something like that, and I was like, checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> okay, that's it, no more yelling. Aww. I haven't really yelled at you ever since. I never yelled at you since. I, there's no reason to ever. The only time I would be inclined to yell at you is when you're batshit crazy. Which is okay. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. Uh, but I... there's no reason to yell at you then because it's not your fault. Mm -hmm. So why would I yell at you? And yelling at you won't fix the problem. It just make it worse. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't know. I didn't know. I feel guilty about things I didn't know or didn't do right, but now I would do them differently. That's just SI. That's a any right? a, any TI SI. It's just like I make mistakes. I do things wrong the first time, always, and then I do them right afterwards. Yeah. You have at least feelings towards that stuff. There are people who do stuff and then move on. They don't even think twice about what they did. I adore you. I adore you. I'm never letting you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, you want to end this video? Yeah. That was a good video, Rachel. Yeah. I think very interesting. Thank you for that. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>